Wow. Well, I can barely see anything. Hi. Um, and I think I got slats on my face. I don't know. Looks like it is behind me, but anyway. Um, okay. So, hi, I'm Alyssa. I'm an activator and disruptor and a conscious evolution coach for creative nonconformists. And I want to talk about shadow and starting before you're ready. Um, and speaking of starting before you're ready, I just started this and I was not ready because that's the whole fucking point. So I have some really uh, fun kind of inspirational resources that I'm going to um, use as, uh, as part of the content of this live stream. So this is called Pronoia. One of my favorite books. It is the antidote of paranoia. It is all about how the universe is conspiring to shower you with blessings. So why not adopt that attitude, right? Knowing that everything is always working out for you, knowing that you cannot make a mistake, knowing that you're always getting everything that you need and knowing that you are infinitely loved. <laughs> you are that already. So you're perfect and worthy in every second, no matter what you do. If you never did another fucking thing in your entire life, you'd still be absolutely perfect and worthy. Um, so I found some cool shit about shadow in, in this beautiful book of Pronoia. So let me know if you know, if you're familiar with Rob Bresney. Um, he's such an awesome, like astrologer, an activist, kind of philosopher, and this, just this brilliant, awesome man. And he does, uh, it's, um, called free will astrology. If you've never heard of it, I highly recommend you checking that out, getting on his mailing list. And, and, um, if you're really into it and enjoy it, purchasing his extended, um, horoscope, it's like $6 and you get, I think, um, the last audio that I purchased, it was like around 10 minutes and it was just really deeply touching and so absolutely helpful for me to listen to. Hey, Kevin. So, um, yeah. Start before you're ready. So I have this beautiful chunk of, is it pyrite when it's like fool's gold? It's so pretty. Can you see that? Maybe you can see a little bit. Ooh, there you go. Look, look at that sparkle. Oh my God. It's so awesome. I love holding this and looking at it. It's just so magical and beautiful. So starting before you're ready. And now I'm reading a little excerpt from Stephen Prestel. Okay. I might have to um, hold my phone because that was not good. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold it and speak. So start before you're ready. This is about anything that you've been hesitating about, anything that you're experiencing resistance about because we only experience resistance um, when we know that we're meant to do something, when it's something that is a, a, a desire that we are, we know we're supposed to be taking action with, right? So don't prepare. Begin. Remember, our enemy is not lack of preparation. It's not difficulty of the project or the state of the marketplace or the emptiness of our bank account. The enemy is resistance. The enemy is our chattering brain which if we give it so much as a nanosecond, will start producing excuses, alibis, transparent self-justifications, and a million reasons why we can't, shouldn't, won't do what we know we need to do. Start before you're ready. So I love Stephen Pressfield's work and I'm, and I'm, you know, reading this excerpt. However, I, I want to say that, um, in my, uh, my truth is that you don't necessarily need to view resistance as an enemy. Um, although it can be super helpful for some to see it that way so that you are like, okay, this is cause it's, it is kind of a, a fucking war. Um, but resistance really to me is the conglomeration of our shadow selves and it can be, and that's essentially the human consciousness and survival consciousness is what resistance is because it feels a threat. It feels threatened by anything that is unknown and something that is unknown and unseen. It is perceives as a threat to our actual survival. So that is basically anything that you've ever wanted to do, um, is going to seem like death 
<laughs> to your human self. And your human self will try to stop you at every motherfucking turn, no matter what. So it is kind of like, it can be helpful to see resistance as an enemy, but I just feel like I don't want to further have a disown, denial, reject, or repressed, um, you know, a mentality or attitude about the resistance because the resistance is really just your shadow and shadow, um, is anything that is disowned, denied, rejected, or repressed. So we're wanting to bring that, um, into light, into the light of awareness, and then also alchemize that. And so the way that you do that is by, um, shamelessly loving the fuck out of yourself <laughs> and by telling the truth. And also knowing that everything that you um, are experiencing now is what you have want, wanted. Um, whether you, uh, you know, want, sometimes that's really, really hard for the human to accept and understand or to fully embrace. So um, I'd like to also, since we're talking about the shadow, I want to read a couple little blips out of Pronoia about shadow because they're really juicy and good. So the alchemist said the magic formula for enlightenment was visita inferiora terre rectificanato in Venus occultum lapidum. Some Latin there. I'm totally butchering the pronunciation, I'm sure. Which means seek out the lo lower reaches of the earth, perfect them, and you will find the hidden stone. Referring to the Philosopher's Stone. So Jungian psychologists might describe the process this way. Find the igno ignorant, wounded parts of your psyche, perfect them, and you will awaken your hidden divinity. So what that essentially means is that you have all this latent power within you, right? And it is all in that, in our shadow selves, in the, it's all in anything that we say that is not me. That's where your power is. And anything that you are experiencing like, oh, I really don't like that. That's where your power is. Anything you're like, I wish that that person, you know, anything that you're judging, anything that you're um, condemning, that is, that is your power. So um, another little um, excerpt I'd like to read from Pronoia is this. The goddess Hecate also lives, or Hecate, I'm not sure how to pronounce, H-E-C-A-T-E, -E, also lives in the underworld. According to the poet Robert Graves, she is the mistress of sorcery, the goddess of ghosts and night terrors, of phantoms and fearful monsters. On the other hand, he notes, Hecate is, presides at seed time and childbirth. She grants prosperity, victory, and plentiful harvests to the farmer and rich catches to the fishermen. So how can a single deity embody such seemingly contradictory archetypes? And Graves says, she symbolizes the unconscious in which the beasts and monsters swarm. This is not the living hell of the psychotic, but a reservoir of energy to be brought under control just as chaos was brought to cosmic order under the influence of spirit. So if you see from this example, hi David, hi Genesis, oh, I love you guys. So um, this is essentially like anything, an another thing I read in here, which was so powerful too, whatever is rejected from the self appears in the world as an event, said Jung. If you disown a part of your personality, or anything, it'll materialize as an unexpected detour. Everyone who believes in the devil is the devil. <laughs> so it's just so, so important that we, um, that we shine the light of awareness on anything that we, we say that is not us. The human self wants to, wants to say this or that, right, wrong, good, bad, black and white, like to, to separate and, um, and it's not to discount differences. It's not to discount, um, nuances at all. It's just the, um, understanding that anything that we are not holding ourselves accountable to anything that we're disowning, denying, rejecting, or repressing is where our power lies it really is where our power lies. And it's so important to tell the truth 
with that to uncover and recognize where our shadows are running the show and to shine the light of truth on them and to shamelessly love the fuck out of ourselves. So I want to um, end this with, a, with this quote, which is so powerful. And I, you probably heard it before, but I love this because, you know, starting and um, any creative endeavor really is a, is a bold uh, decision and a commitment, right? So there's this beautiful quote about commitment that I love so much by W.H. Murray. Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always ineffectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. I just got truth bumps. A whole stream of events issues from the decision raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidences and meetings and material assistance which no one could have dreamed would come their way. I have learned a deep respect for one of Gilf's couplets. Whatever you can do or dream, you can. Begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Okay, I'm going to get up now. So I'm trying to get in a better light. I love that so much because commitment is really about... Um, you make the decision, right? Oh, this is so much better. The light is better. So you make a decision. Look at these freaking beautiful roses behind me. Oh. And then you keep deciding. That's the secret with it, right? It's like we're, we are we hear this all the time, right? Like just decide, just make the choice, just decide to do whatever it is. But unless you commitment and, and bold decision is not just that one moment. Like how many times have you decided to do something and then fucking went back on what you were doing and didn't stay committed? It's the continual recommitment in every moment in every moment to become unwavering and you know how good that feels when you are that fucking committed and you are that determined and you've made such a bold choice you build that momentum like what the the quote was just saying you know it just it feels absolutely amazing and when you can become unwavering <laughs> in your decision, you become unfucking stoppable and unfuckwithable. And there's nothing better like feeling than that. When you decide you're like, this is what I choose. This is what I'm bringing forth into the world. Nothing will stop me. And then you keep deciding and you keep deciding. And when something happens and you get knocked off course, you get right back up and you fucking commit again. That's what you do. You know, you could use the example of marriage or, or something, you know, like, what do you do? Like you choose, you keep choosing that person if you're in, a, if you're committed or even if it's not marriage, like in a, in a committed relationship, you choose, you keep choosing, you choose, you choose, you choose. And when you don't do that, they fall apart, right? <laughs> or whatever it is, when you don't keep choosing what you said you wanted, it doesn't fucking work. Um, yeah, that bold choice. So what are you doing that, that helps you to hold that commitment and that choice and holds you accountable? I know for me, I chose to get support. I invested in mentorship because as a highly creative person, um, I have all kinds of ideas and things that I would like to implement. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have like a huge like burst of of inspiration and creativity and energy and passion and then I'll get something started and then kind of be like uh maybe maybe I don't actually want to do that maybe I'll change directions or or maybe that just needs a little bit more tweaking before I can like release it to the world whether it's a song that I wrote or um you know uh even like a course that I created or whatever but what I found is the most effective is just getting it out there just get it out get it out of you 
and get it out into the world. And so I created a a 30 day container for creatives to unleash their great work into the world and get fucking paid for it. And that's a like a one on one intensive with me. So at the end of the 30 days, the result that you get to have when you invest your time, energy and money into this container with me, I invest into you in turn and we get your work, your great work, whatever that looks like for you. If it's a program course offering, you're going to create it and you're going to be it's going to be done. And then you're going to sell it. You're going to bring it to the world and you get to make money doing that. So I know that your creative work is invaluable and you get to be paid for your work in the world. That is so important to understand. There is a lot of programming that would have you feel feeling and thinking otherwise. Some of my shit just blew, blew up <laughs> over here. So I was picking it up. But anyway, fuck yeah, that's the thing is like I fully believe that this is part of a huge part of how we're changing the world is by deciding that we are going to do it, that like we have the power. So the biggest like misconception I believe with, with power is that we believe that we don't have it. Like we believe that somehow we believe that we're powerless and that's just not true. That's just not true. And so when we can't own our value and own our worth, we can't be effectively powerful and in bringing our work into the world. So that's what I'm here for is to, is to support you in that. And, um, and I'm so excited for that. So if you're interested in that, if this all feels like so good to you and you know, like you've been knowing that you have this thing that you want to bring to the world because you don't have desires in your heart without the, the cooperative component to that, which means that if you have a desire to serve someone and serve a specific audience or people, or, you know, you have this passion, it's there because your God creator self is seeking to express itself through you in that way. And that there are others out here that are waiting to receive it. That are, that are the receptive end of your gift. So you have the gift, you have the shit that you need to unleash on the world. People need that shit. Okay. People need that. And don't hold it back, especially right now. We can do so much if we're willing to own our fucking value and bring forth our great work into the world. And I'm speaking to the people that are like, know that they're here for a massive, massive um, change, revolution in so many ways that are like, here to do the fucking work. So I, I, I'm speaking to and work with only those who are here to confront the depths, right? I mean, that is so important to know. So if you are someone that's like, fuck yes, I am committed and I'm looking for accountability. I'm looking for support. I'm willing to do the fucking work to do whatever it fucking takes to get my work in the world because I've tried already a, a million times on my own and I keep getting in my own way. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm done with that shit and I'm ready to bring forth my work and sell it and own your value in that. That's part of the work that we do. Okay. Is really owning your value. And that's been one of my biggest lessons. So it's one of my biggest strengths and gifts now. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Reach out to me if you're interested in my 30 day container, kill resistance for creatives to unleash their great work onto this world and get paid for it to create a tangible piece of art and offering. Thanks for watching. Bye.